Hello everyone! Welcome back to the RationalMister.com's Broiler Chicken Show! Back, 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 back! <laughs> hello, hello! Um, suppose uh, at some point maybe we'll do like a soundbite on uh, some sort of formal introduction. We used to do the Muppet Show, uh, play that theme song, but then YouTube, of course, <laughs> craps all over you. Copyright, you can't use that song. So uh, <laughs> you have my my personal rendition of uh, <laughs> what an opening soundbite should sound like. Oh, no idea if that's uh, even of any value whatsoever, but what the hell. If it's one thing you'll all remember out of the Beamish is uh, he sure was an odd character, right? Eh? Thinking outside the box, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, it is, um, it's an interesting day here today at TRI uh, in that, uh, you know, obviously we're heading out of the summer and into the fall of uh, 2021. Of course, they don't call it the fall for nothing. Anybody who's been working with me for a while knows uh, what to expect here over September, October, November. <laughs> it's usually a bit of a challenge. Uh, what's, mind you, you know, it might set up an interesting buying window, but unfortunately, uh, once every four years, the whole crypto space, sort of, I guess, that uh, business cycle moving average kind of uh, thinking, uh, it goes a little bit nutso here in the end of the year. And unfortunately, it, uh, it's a harbinger of the end of the cycle. And uh, har uh, not a harbinger, it is a sign of the end of the cycle. And it's a harbinger of uh, usually a year or two of serious cleanup ahead of time. And more importantly, just, you know, it's fascinating how the, um, the it, it should be just a natural, healthy cleanup of previously built-in euphoria. But the way that it's, it's orchestrated is uh, they just like their one fear event after another, after another, after another just really just playing on your emotions as an investor um you know whether it be the tax man uh whether it be mr regulators and uh you know conflict of interest policies um whether it be hell uh, the bankers and the banking system deeming that uh, this particular product is uh is uh is uh a threat to uh <laughs> their their our cartel and their very convenient oligopoly business model and so as a result they they will actually take um uh, overt steps to uh to uh make sure that their business models are protected uh, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Uh, don't be surprised. Uh, in the next few years, uh, we'll have to go through a very normal sort of crypto cleanup. Uh, but that's not today. And uh, just remember, uh, usually Brian, uh, the, the, the saying goes, uh, Brian's usually uh, right, uh, but he's usually early. So if I'm uh, barking at you about uh, you're getting too euphoric and too optimistic, then that means probably we got another uh, we got another uh, six eight months of this insanity ahead of us, to the point where Brian just goes fuck it I give up and there's no point in talking and then as soon as I do that literally the day the next day the market breaks <laughs> it almost always happens it drives me crazy so uh, just you know just take this as your sort of early warning. I'm that uh, early warning radar system way out on the horizon that's sort of saying, oh, you know, we got to pay attention. Um, I'd also say, too, that um, uh, this space, this especially you all those that are interested in cryptocurrencies, this space is maturing. Which means that, unfortunately, um, maturation in the world of capitalism means that there are going to be more sneakier, unscrupulous characters. And the funny thing is, is as a market matures, the bad actors seem to actually rise up the food chain, right? So, 
you get to the point, 2008 financial crisis, the bad actors were the government. They were the people that were supposed to be the watchdogs. They were the people that were supposed to be the ratings agencies to keep everybody honest. And it turns out they were corrupt as shit. <laughs> so, uh, that you know, that's the one thing I think I've learned in my lifetime that I'm very, very disappointed. Is there's no goddamn rule book at the end of the day that we humans are, you know, should follow along. You know what the rule book is? Who's got, he who's got the biggest gun uh, makes the rules. And that's that, you know, when I stand beside my maker, I'm going to be like, you know, I appreciate that the universe, it doesn't really have any say. I think the universe is just as equal uh, negative as it is positive, you know, like sort of the uh, yin and yang, positive, negative sort of forces. Um... And ironically, sadly enough, I don't think spirit really, I mean, it, I think spirit has the best intentions, but ironically enough, from spirit's perspective, I don't even think there is a difference between sort of quote unquote good and bad. I mean, how would you explain, I've all, my whole life I've sat there and gone, how do you explain the existence of like a spider? A spider is nothing more than just a professional killing machine, and the way that they kill is just horribly... Um, <laughs> merciless I guess so how do you explain that in nature how do you or, or like a shark I mean all a shark is is it's just a it's a, <laughs> a full-time killing machine so I don't know stupid world we live in how do you make head or tail out of this I do um, I do fancy myself one of the good guys and I try to make a positive difference in this world I can't spend your money for you, and if anything, that's actually dangerous. Um, what I can try and do, and this has been, been my promise to you over the past, you know, what, seven years or so that I've been working with you guys, is I try to be as open and as honest as I possibly can with you, to the fault that I'll do things like I'll just share my trading spreadsheet. I don't really care. It's, I mean, if I'm a shitty trader, it's going to show. <laughs> if I'm a good trader, it shows. And really what I want to do, ideally, is be sort of a demonstrator of best practices. Um, and uh, in a weird sort of way, I think, you know, that's... Well, not in a weird sort of way. I think in a positive way. It's resonated with you, the public. Um, I don't think, uh, you know, I, was, I had a nice uh, dinner with... Uh, my local buddy, we treat ourselves every once in a while, had a big-ass fucking steak. Couldn't believe the price of the grocery stores. Now now the price of the steaks at the grocery stores are the same price as they are at the restaurants. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, it's so sad. I, I, I weep for the guy punching the clock, the pensioner who gets a fixed income. They're getting just screwed here. Um, and it's uh, it's tragic, you know. Like the leader in my country, he comes from a a trust fund kind of um, world, so he never sees that pain that a uh, a pensioner uh, is seeing right now. Even fucking cat food, I bet, is getting to the point where it's like, whoa, this is really stretching our weekly budget. It's just pathetic. But uh, thank you very much, uh, you know. Um, the banksters, this very well orchestrated uh, con job that they've pulled on all of us, and I, I've I've been barking at you guys forever. You know, yeah, Bitcoin might go up in value, and thank God we got Bitcoin. But psh, loaf of bread is going to be fifty bucks at the grocery store. Thank you, banksters. Love you. Hugs and kisses. So, sad part about it is this: uh, this is getting so tense around here, and I think this goes on for another year or two. I would not be surprised if this actually either dissolves into civil war kind of scenarios or even outright martial law in different parts of the world. Don't be, don't be shocked if that's uh, what we eventually uh, end up at. And, um, you know, we just, we, I mean, we have to accept it. Unfortunately, I don't think any of us watching this YouTube video, and I try to tell my audience about this, you know, we're too small to make a difference in this world, right? We're just we're just too small of players. But 
That doesn't mean you can't participate and play the game with open eyes. Just understand what reality is. Don't kid yourself. And for God's sakes, you know, the worst part about all this is don't trust anything that they say on TV. TV is basically a lying machine. And now it seems like most of our newspapers and our you know, like they used to call it journalism. And, you know, if I was going to give a shout out to our society, I would say, you know, what happened to this thing called the fourth estate? I mean, the fourth estate was supposed to be journalism. The journalists were supposed to be impartial and they were supposed to keep a, an eye on things like politicians and on the, the fat cat capitalists. So there's where our society has really failed. Um, and you just... You know, it sucks to have to sit here and say you cannot trust what your local news is telling you because that local news is owned by a corporation and they have a very specific agenda in mind. And the worst part about all this, I suppose, is that there is a grain of truth to their message. I'm sure they have the best intentions. But, you know, when they get caught in their lies, you lose all sort of faith and all sort of trust in the system. Very disappointed the way the capitalist system has uh, played out here. I mean, I'm not quite sure what to do. The good part about this, hopefully, is that, you know, they always say there's truth in numbers. And uh, if I can eventually get Seward to the point where this thing's actually working, then I can actually visually show you truth through numbers. You know, if it's one thing I've tried to teach everybody here at TRI, you want to make money from trading, you have to understand the truth of the market. And the truth of the market is it's based on supply and demand. That's IE. I want it, I want it, I want it. Oh, well, well, there's not much of it around. I want it, I want it, I want it. Well, which way is price going to go? I mean, if there isn't much of it around and people are clamming for it, well, up goes price. I mean, that's truth. That's actual truth. Uh, in the marketplace. Now, of course, we can have various uh, rather large pocketed individuals push prices around to make it look like uh, certain things are happening as well. So, you know, we use, uh, you know, we always say uh, don't justify a trade just based on one reason. You should have like multiple reasons. I mean, you should have this, this idea of confluence of reasons um, to justify your actions in the market. I think that's really the only truth left in this world. It's fascinating. So, in a weird sort of way, because we just simply cannot trust anything that anybody says to us. We can't even trust what our governments are saying to us. Ironically enough, if anything, it's an even bigger sales pitch for TRI. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you were going to create like a perfect marketing scenario for Brian, we're going to build you the most perfect scenario to sell your product of best practices, of being transparent, of being uh, follow it, teaching and following the process putting emotion aside and just trading the way professionals operate in the marketplace, which is the way that these, you know, hedge funds and all this crap work. I mean, what a perfect scenario. You can't try, you turn on the TV, you can't trust anything. They're saying even on the damn news channels. And that's what really pisses me off is you can't even trust them. So I think, you know, it'd be interesting just to get like a little feedback from even the people that are on the show here today and anybody watching the video later on. Um, if you follow the process, does it help relieve the anxiety of all these cross messages that you're getting through our society? I believe the answer is yes, but... I would prefer, you know, there's about 30, 40 people in the uh, YouTube page, about 20 uh, some odd people here in the Hangout. I would prefer somebody who's watching this video later on as they're watching sort of the uh, the text go by. 
for you guys to validate what I'm saying here. I don't want to sit here and go, well, learn the process, damn it, I know it works. It's, what I want is people watching this video later on to look at the text and go, oh, shit, look at these. I'll look at all these people going, yep, yep, absolutely, 100%, 100%. So I, I see I got one person. <laughs> Come on, you guys. I mean, help the people that are going to be watching this video later on. Thank you, Aaron. I appreciate Aaron said something. There, Paul just says, 200%. You have upped the bid, eh? <laughs> the only problem is they can't see you on YouTube. I need you to go over to the YouTube page and actually type right on the YouTube page. <laughs> Anyway, um, aside from that, and maybe we'll let uh, people just uh, uh, answer. There we go. So there's some good answers. Like, seriously, people, if you're watching this channel for the first time, I mean, seriously, we're here to help. We're here to make a positive difference. We don't make any money on this Google page. I don't care how many subscribers there are. This is the truth. I'm going to be nasty. I'm going to be colorful. I'm probably going to be a little vulgar sometimes. But if it's one thing I absolutely want to get across here is I'm going to tell the truth um, yeah I mean the truth is I live in a two-bedroom condo actually I'm gonna move in in a month uh, with a buddy of mine we're gonna totally trick out this house and make it like the trading Mecca uh, and actually it'll be cool because maybe I'll turn the camera on and I'll show you uh, the whole setup once we're all set up but I'm not living, I'm not driving a Lambo while I'm doing this. <laughs> or, you know, a big yacht Lambo or whatever. I'm just another guy like you. Right? I'm just, or a girl like you. I'm just another girl just like you. So, um, anyway. Uh, it, it, this is, today is an interesting day because usually what I do is um, I use these broiler chicken shows to talk to the current level one students because the level one program is so daunting. Uh, we have, uh, you know, two or three hours of lecture every week. Then we have two or three hours with Graham uh, on Sundays before this broiler chicken show. And then if there's any issues, you know, especially when we get into the strategic planning parts of, uh, of uh, you know, where the hell the damn economies going and fear greed cycles and yield curves and all that shit um, uh, did we, I don't know whether I'm still working on uh, on YouTube or not well, let's see what's going on here chat disconnected please wait while we try to reconnect you successfully connected this message is held for review like his rant so much value and zero shilling shit real man no BS. Hey, cool. D Mac. D Mac Mac D. Am I still uh, here? Um, I don't know whether I'm still recording. Can you guys hear me? Can you imagine how much I love you? Hey, there's Paul. Um, see what happened there. Better now. All right. Well, let's see. How do I s how do I figure out what what I'm presenting? Brian, there we are. Let's see. Hey, there we go. Got the web page back on here now. Back in black. Hey, I'm back in black. Dun 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 dun. dun. <laughs> Woo hey, hey, Josh is gonna dance. All right, I'm back in black. It's sick. It's good to be back. Nine lives, cat size. <laughs> All right, uh, I don't know what the fuck I'm smoking. Was I talking about? I I think probably yeah, Google did that because I must have been talking about something I shouldn't have been talking about. Uh, where was I? Um, I think I just said that uh, on, usually what I do is I just talk to the current level winners, but we're on summer break right now. Uh, we are getting ready for a new school term. So uh, to that end, I know a lot of you guys on the YouTube channel um, really kind of appreciated like the, uh, the free raffle that we put together for the level one uh, seat. Uh, in uh, terms and years gone by. 
Um, and actually, let's go see over on the... Uh, actually, I'm getting the green light now from OBS. I had the red light there for a minute or so ago. Um, so uh, the point being that we're going to try and have the raffle today. Raffle, raffle for level 1C. Woohoo, party. Um, and actually, uh, speaking of which, I, um, I had um, reached out to the community just to ask for a little bit of assistance because I'm not really good at managing any of this shit. Um, had uh, Kevin, of course, a, a super helper in the past. Um, and um, um, I asked uh, recently for some assistance. And uh, Rachel uh, uh, put her foot forward. I don't know what we say there um offered to uh help and actually grim also uh chimed in saying you know maybe we uh clean things up and make it a form so that people don't feel as though there there's going to be others fishing for email addresses and stuff uh from entrance and i uh, was able to get grim and rachel to talk a little bit and uh, rachel just took over and she just uh, owned it i was so impressed so um I don't know. I mean, I'd be more than happy, actually, to have Rachel come on and announce the winner. Um, I don't know whether she's camera shy or not, though. I mean, I kind of like, you know, I don't care whether if I sound good or bad. But I know a lot of people that aren't new. Like, in fact, a guy I had dinner with the other day, I was like, I'm going to make you famous. And he goes, no, you're not. I'm not going on air. You're never going to make You'll never make me go on air. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay, well, I mean, I want to make you famous. <laughs> so Rachel, it's up to you. Um, she did all. She did the work and look at the job she's uh, done here. Uh, quite a few people signed up, but Rachel, does this look like the finished product? Hey, Brian. Hey, guys. Hey, uh, hey, hey, there she is. Hey, hey, welcome, welcome. I, this looks great, but I think there are more names on there. I think there are 185 entries. 185. So uh, what does that mean? It's, uh, do we have two wheels? Well, I've got a wheel with 185 if you want me to spin it. Uh, yeah. I mean, is this the wheel that we're going to use? I, either one. Or I sent you a PM with the link to the wheel, which has got 185. Oh, okay. We might as well use that one. So where are you? You're over here somewhere, right? Rachel, Rachel, Rachel. Rachel's not impressed with the Canadian healthcare system, by the way, right at the moment. So uh, I think, if anything, I uh, appreciate her sentiment right now. Okay, let's see what we got here. So this is the one with the even more names. Let's see what we got. Boom. Oh, no, that looks better, yes. <laughs> Can't even fit it all on the screen. Now that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we gotta get more of those women. Uh, my sentiments exactly, DMAC. My sentiments exactly. And frankly speaking, I've told everybody this before. When I was a broker, I used to love telling my clients that they did studies, and it turns out women make far better investors than men. <laughs> but anyway, we won't go there right now. So, point of the matter here is when do we want to do this? Do we want to do this now, at the end of the show? What do you think? What, what, what? Wait, where's Josh? I think I saw Josh here. He's our marketing guy. What's the best way to play this, sir? Hey, hey. You want to come on here, too? Your f best feminine voice? Come hello. on. Hello, hello. There he is. Hey, Josh. <laughs> One second. Have you guys noticed that... Uh, um, and, and by all means, Rachel, uh, chime in with your two cents here. Uh, have you all noticed um, uh, TRI's uh, social media uh, has been really blasting out the, the content of late? Uh, things like Twitter feeds and stuff like that. And uh, that's, that's I haven't Josh. noticed anything. Yeah, Josh <laughs> is doing, doing some great stuff. I love that. three. Uh, if you can't find three reasons for a trade, what the fuck? Get your ass in school. And learn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do more like that. And it was fascinating like because one. there was a lot of people that couldn't find three reasons, right? They just literally couldn't yeah. do it. So it just goes to show that, yeah, actually, we know what we're doing here. So are you doing the spin now or are you going to do I it? I don't know. You guys tell me. Remember, I, I, I'm the uh, buy button. There. That's the buy button there. That, that's the sell button there. That's about all I know. I don't know what else to do. I think, I think it should be done at the end, at, at, the, at oh, the end okay. of the end. 
YouTube is filled with people screaming now. Now, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now man, don't let us be nervous. You know what I've seen? I've seen people do one at the beginning just to keep everyone happy, and one at the end, like a bonus one. What but... are you doing? Three seats. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end is a minimum, I think. All right, uh, so, so you're just all going to have to uh, suck it up. <laughs> <laughs> and if anything, I love Rachel. Rachel, uh, she's the, she's the, uh, she's the empath, uh, empathetic, empathetic, is that it? Em empath? Loves, she's actually like, oh, they're suffering. They're suffering. Give them some release. No. No. It's, get it. it's only an hour. And they'll get a good education in the process. This is the, the broiler chickens are always jam-packed with value. Oh, there you go. Gee whiz. Okay. So uh, it's better than I. Geez, I, I no excuses now. I better get to work. <laughs> okay. So the wheel's there. And awesome. uh, I think I'd actually like to have uh, maybe Rachel and Josh can uh, – Sing out the uh, the winner's name in unison. I don't know, but uh, we'll have them come on and uh, announce the winner at the end of the show. If I understand correctly, uh, David Eisner, who's sort of our big uh, marketing campaign guy, he's the guy who writes all those really awesome emails uh, that you guys get the summaries of the daily briefs and stuff uh, heading into the school term. Um, He's um, he's in the past had a sort of a very specific campaign that uh, he follows and he and he sent me messages saying that the campaign officially starts tonight. So um, we'll do the brother chicken show. Uh, we'll spin the wheel. We'll announce the winner, and then basically you have uh, a week to sort of take a, take advantage of David's. Uh, offers and stuff and um you know i guess through the daily briefs and stuff we'll make reference to that and then maybe josh if you want you can uh, send messages out to the public because i don't really do those daily videos anymore that's awfully labor intensive anyway we'll figure that out down the road point of the matter here is there you are and at the top of the show we will spin that wheel and find out who's the big winner of this fall's uh level one raffle and i have to say some of the people that have won that, those raffles have gone on to do some really big things um, in the market and around, even around TRI. So super, super nice. Um, what I've noticed, I think what we're getting ready for is sort of the final push into the year end. Um, this kind of thinking. Um, I know it sounds crazy and probably a lot of people that, that are new to this space don't really sort of fully appreciate uh, the four-year cycle nature of crypto, but I do see it. I, I, I've actually been through two of these exact same cycles now, this being the third. Um, and interestingly enough, I, I see just, it's stunning the, the similar behavioral patterns. So I don't know whether this is, um, this is a function of the chaotic nature of the underlying money supply system um, or the, uh, the acceptance and the adoption of crypto, or maybe a combination of both. Uh, but I definitely feel as though uh, we're heading into some sort of, uh, you know, sort of insane face rip uh, orgy end uh, to this particular four-year cycle into the end of the year. What I've just been really warning people is, you know, if we do go parabolic like this, the one thing that absolutely breaks my heart is uh, having to try and slow people down um, through uh, next year and and the and the year following. Because what should happen here, um, you know, if we follow sort of normal historic um, precedent, uh, let's see if I can just show you that. Here maybe. So what uh, should happen here? Uh, if we take a look at the first cycle off of 2013, this is when I first came into the space. So that's why I said I, I went through this cycle. In fact, actually, the very first altcoin I ever bought was in through here. Um, I didn't actually buy my first bitcoins until actually Julian and I started up the education program. And we even sold the education program in Bitcoins. 
Uh, so can you imagine, you know, when Bitcoin was two, three hundred dollars and we were charging a thousand dollars, that'd be like five Bitcoins for for the course. <laughs> Should we maybe have held on to those Bitcoins? <laughs> Isn't that incredible? Five Bitcoins for for the education program at two, three hundred bucks. No, uh, maybe four Bitcoins. Anyway. Hell, I remember, you know, it's so funny. Poor old Sjord. I remember Sjord. Uh, we had this uh, beautiful technical breakout. And I think it was uh, through uh, this level right through here. Um, and um, if I'm not mistaken, um, I mean, just a really nice uh, technical breakout through here. And I think Sjord... Um, we had sort of said, well, reload zones are like $600 or something along those lines. Uh, might have been even in here. And uh, for like a year or two, we had, uh, it was a running joke that Sjord had his uh, bid working to buy Bitcoins at 600 bucks. And of course, woo, up it goes. <laughs> you know, this high here is, uh, you know, what, 20 Gs. So I've uh, been around the uh, crypto space for a while now, that's for sure. Um, anyway, so the point of the matter here is that, um, you know, whether it be this cycle, this period here is very, very difficult to slog through. Uh, I, you know, in relative comparison terms, I think we're in this part. If I was going to draw a similar scenario, which means we probably have, I'm not exactly sure where we are, but maybe somewhere in there. Yeah, we got about that much left of this rally window. And then once this happens, then I have to go into like literally two years of, eh, well, just got to cool your jets. And literally, we should expect almost a full year of, well, there's just not much to do here. And the worst part about it, of course, you know, in this particular cycle, same thing. Um, in this particular part of the cycle, this is actually, um, you know, I don't think it was really the, the best thing to do, but nonetheless, you know, it's just, it is what it is. And hindsight's twenty twenty. not much you can do about it now. But this, of course, is where everybody and their brother was so insanely bullish. And, of course, what happens? They go and buy their Bitcoins. Hey, I'm a Bitcoin bull. We're all going to get rich. We're all going to get rich, right? And then they come to TRI, and they're like, okay, Brian, I want to learn how to trade. And what's the first thing Brian says? Brian says, well, put your money away, and uh, let's learn the process. Maybe take like a year or so. 100 paper trades. Do any of them do it? No. <laughs> None of them listen to me. And, you know, we even had one guy who, uh, <coughs> through this period here, and trust me, you know, when we have to go through this period, it's going to be damn painful. Um, if any of you buy up through here, this is just going to be like torture. Um, but uh, one guy he came on the site and uh, he kept uh, trying to come up with excuses to see if he could somehow get a lawsuit to stick against TRI. And, uh, you know, like I show uh, level one program, we show like uh, the efficient frontier. So any wise investor, if you don't know what the efficient frontier is, maybe get your butt into the school. <laughs> but, of course, all TRIers know what the efficient frontier is. And, you know, don't put too much money into any one play. And that's basically Brian's second rule of investing. Don't take more than 5% risk on any one idea. <sighs> but even through here, and this is the worst part about capitalism. The absolute worst part about capitalism is... Um, through here, as the public is dying a thousand deaths, and as somebody says on YouTube, uh, it, through this, it will just be like, oh, Bitcoin's, you know, going to lose 70, 80% of its value. And really, it's nothing new. What do you think the odds are that this is a reload zone pullback after that big monstrous rally? Oh, well, gee whiz, what a cliche. I mean, there's nothing new about any of this shit. It's just the same old, same old, over and over and over. But as somebody said there over on YouTube, as you, as the corn has to go through this, all coins can get absolutely decimated. And then you get like Trax does its like, you know, delisting torture, almost like 
they do it on purpose to just drive the kids crazy month after month after month after month until they finally give up and say, I never want to do this again. It's all fucking scam. So it's almost cliche the way that this, this goes, folks. So, you know, I mean, enjoy enjoy the market state. If anything, I, I would prefer, you know, and in this particular analogy, if we think sort of again, where are we in that sort of four-year cycle? Gee whiz, there's July, August pivot. Here we are, the end of August, September, pushing higher. Uh, even this, I don't think we're at this scenario, but it doesn't really matter. If anything, I think Ethereum is doing this this scenario, this go-round. Um, but uh, just respect the fact that we're in this phase of the cycle. All right, just respect that. Let's all go make a shitload of money. I mean, theoretically, by the end of the year, all of our portfolios should be 4 or 5x, whatever they are right now. question is, are you going to have the balls to step in there and liquidate into that? And uh, I've told Seward I, I want to make a plan to do that because uh, my son, he needs a house. That was the whole, I mean, to be perfectly honest with you, the whole reason for me to do all of this <clears throat> was uh, after um, after my wife passed, I didn't know what the fuck to do with this stupid life. And, of course, we have this beautiful little child who's uh, completely, uh, you know, special needs, low-functioning autism, um, totally helpless, that Joanne and I brought into this universe, that we're responsible for him. And I, I can't, as a person feel good about just downloading that job onto the state. That's just not who I am. So if the end result of this 10 year work my ass off to try and make a better play, better, you know, universe, try and make a positive difference in your guys' life, uh, try and, you know, teach you guys not to fall into the pitfalls that, you know, people like Goldman Sachs and Joey Diamond and stuff want you to fall into those pit pitfalls and they set you up. They buy media outlets and they tell the media outlets to say a very specific message to get you to fall into those pitfalls. Then, hey, you know, that's a win-win. If, if at the end of this I can, you know, build a, like some sort of trust fund for Liam so that he's not dependent on the system. Um, uh, and and if, you know, heaven forbid my time's up and I should have to, uh, you know, head on... Um, my way that we can just leave that house in trust for him so that he never has to be sort of dependent on the system that uh, he you know hopefully all of you guys sort of act as his godparents and um, and uh, keep an eye out for him I mean that would be my ideal wish um, anyway so the point of the matter here is um, just understand the phase that we're in here uh, Ironically enough, like I said, I mean, it's kind of weird when we started this year, I, I mapped this out and like what I found really fascinating is the way the market turned there in the uh, in the spring with that silly uh, do doge coin story <clears throat> and the euphoria all around uh, uh, Allen getting involved in the cryptocurrency space and then of course him just like rug pulling the whole fucking market underneath all the his fans, you know, what's ironic is I wonder how many of them are still his fans after they just got their asses kicked by him. Are, are they still Allen fans? Are they still mindless drones? I don't know. Be interesting to weigh in on anybody who bought uh, Doge anywhere above, I don't know, 30, 40 cents. Uh, you're, you're underwater and you're dying a thousand deaths here. Do you get angry at uh, Allen yet? I don't know. Uh, interesting how very normal, uh, ironically enough, from a stock market perspective, sell in May and walk away kind of idea, uh, into the summer, very normal trough. Uh, so interestingly enough, TRI folks were actually pretty well served, you know, sell in May and walk away. I think we had the narrative taped. What do you think, guys? Now, are you going to appreciate that for the rest of your lives, if you ever think about Brian's birthday... <laughs> Maybe you better think about getting the fuck out of risk assets. Brian's birthday's uh, May 11th, and I swear every single year it's always the same thing. 
Oh, my birthday's coming. You better made your money. Get the fuck out of the market. We'll see you come next uh, fall, right? Buy when it snows, sell when it goes. It's remarkable how consistent it is. So, interestingly enough, we might even find that this thing actually starts launching through those highs that we saw in the spring, right about the time that it starts snowing again. Snow's back, up goes price. <laughs> Basically, that was just a big hurry up and do nothing for six months. Wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, anyway, so the point here is... Um, if anything, what I've been suggesting to people is I actually like the idea, if you can, to, uh, you know, we're, we're, we have a simple rule. We're not allowed to chase, right? Don't chase, don't chase, don't chase. So, you know, kind of like this, how this Silk Road reversal, really all it did was it just brought price back down into a buying window. You know, uh, this is a little bit tough to see, but um, how can I do that? We just minimize this just for the time being. Uh, holy moly, it's so much work. Um, let's get rid of it. So there is the range from that July low. And. Um, you know, anybody who's been watching me for a while knows what I like to call this range here from 61.8 down to 78.6. Which, you know, I mean, what the hell? From 50 Gs all the way down here to 78.635, that's a loss of $15,000 or basically about 20, 30%. Um, and ironically enough, you all saw what happened when the sickness got out of control there in 2019 basically the whole damn market just fell right out of bed as they were just going into lockdown 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 everybody locked down um and the whole damn market just collapsed i actually could see exactly the same scenario here wouldn't surprise me one bit uh, having some interesting debates with people on uh, social media about the and this is what i want to see that specifically with regard to the sickness is how many people that were actually vaccinated have to go to hospital and are dying from this and it turns out the vaccine was just a big waste of time if that's actually the case then we're basically right back at square one with this whole shit and if that's the case, then it might mean we got a whole bunch more uh, dilution of the currency to keep the whole damn economy floating. Um, and um, probably further massive price inflation. I was joking with, um, with uh, Andrew yesterday. We were at the grocery store uh, wanting to buy our fare for our meal. And uh, I would feel comfortably spending X amount of dollars uh, at the grocery store for a really nice meal. And basically that price has doubled. Uh, and ironically enough, actually, I could very easily see the whole damn thing double again. Uh, so it's, it's a bit tragic out there. But I, I guess the point that I'm trying to make here is, you know, the, we said this the last time with the Bitcoin correction. This dump here in uh, 2019, um, uh, I guess, to the beginning of 2020, it was actually nothing more than just a very normal, healthy, technical correction. What do you think? Can you see the reload zone there? I mean, this cliche. Um, and then, Dad, insult to injury, uh, what letter of the alphabet do we see down here? And this is cool. If you ever see an M inside a w like in essence there was a bear fight but the bulls won that those are all trap bears that is a hugely massive reversal signal and the interesting thing about this of course is when bitcoin price did this it had nothing to do with bitcoin it had everything to do of course with sickness and you know shutting everything down and the end to the world and Silly little politicians, uh, shouldn't we debate these? Shut up, you! You don't know what you're talking about. 
The banksters are in control, and as they want this to happen, so you better shut up or we're going to find somebody to assassinate you. <laughs> and trust me, ironically enough, that isn't actually too far from the truth. That's, that's the brutal reality about how powerful the banksters are. You get in their way, and even they'll even contract out your assassination just to you know just out of spite you know like lincoln won and just out of spite they knocked him off so you know go figure anyway so the point of the matter here is that if you do get that violent dump um and it doesn't have anything to do with bitcoin that's actually what i think that uh we could be setting up here uh this fall that was a V bottom, so we know V bottom should be tested. And I've just suggested to people, I mean, it's damn difficult. They call it ca trying to catch a falling knife kind of idea. But maybe you want to put like a stink bid here, stink bid here, stink bid here, and just let the market cascade into these levels to give you your fills. It's kind of like what I did there on Ethereum back in the summertime. But the only the only fill I got was the Mountain Man uh, sixty one point eight fill. But hey, I got my fill. I got, I got some, and I was just able to sell half on a double on the Ethereum recently. So I'm feeling pretty good. I was a good trade. Now I got free Ethereum's. So same sort of thing here. I, I don't know where the hell the bottom is here. I do like the idea based on our. Um, oh geez, now what did I do with it? Uh, how do I get that stuff? Well, maybe if I just hit, keep hitting the back button, it'll come back. Um, I Yeah, there it is. Uh, I do really like this idea that there is going to be some sort of technical cleanup move here. But I would actually consider this a pullback into a buying window here. I think price has gone way too far, way too fast anyway. And what's, what I find really fascinating is this is the kind of environment... And, it, you know, I think I showed you just almost exactly the same as 2017. It's scary because, you know, this, this pullback just might not come. I mean, if anybody's like, okay, well, you're guaranteeing that I'm going to get filled on a dip. No, I mean, I'm not guaranteeing anything. You know that. I'll never guarantee anything. All I'm saying is I like this idea. And if that did happen, I would, I would, if I, I might even just go buy some because I do have some cash sitting on the sidelines. If we do get that spike lower, I might just go and pick up some uh, corn heading into the uh, heading into the end of the year. But what I am saying is, um, like I said, that last uh, that last dip like this. If you see that the market just falls apart, but it's not specifically about Bitcoin, then I think uh, there may actually be a hell of a trade coming up here. So anyway, keep that in mind. Um, I always ask, and frankly speaking, I don't know. I think I saw that uh, trading view. This particular site is now following those glass node analysis people and that data. I think you can track that on there. So maybe down the road, I might even uh, incorporate glass node kind of data. Because I like to, uh, the, the matrix that I use to follow Bitcoin looks something along, uh, These lines. So I like to follow uh, the uh, forwards contracts. Uh, this happens to be OK Coin uh, for sentiment. I like to follow the bid uh, relative to the offer on Tether uh, for sort of a sentiment on stable coins. And I follow a bunch of these uh, indexes. You can see I haven't updated them in a while. We had a couple internal indexes that we used to follow uh, last cycle before they actually really started coming out with these indexes in earnest and it's funny because so many of these names have just disappeared that these indexes just don't even work anymore I like to follow the futures contracts see what the Chicago boys are thinking uh, I like to follow the stock market proxies uh, I like to follow the uh, whole crypto uh, market, you know, total market cap and, you know, various different market cap settlements. And, you know, frankly speaking, this has been a really, really good uh, tool to uh, follow this um, market dominance. And I think you can make the argument that uh, Bitcoins uh, or altcoins went into a really nice, friendly window here. Um, 
So this tool has actually been very, very handy. And it's fascinating right on that major apex event here. That's when uh, the whole altcoin market came back to life here. So as long as this just keeps uh, emming out and pointing lower, I'm still looking for uh, more outperformance from altcoins. Um, you know, something that bothers me immensely, which is another anecdote that, uh, you know, we had the cleanup through the summer. This is almost like um, I uh, had a, um, a um, an indicator in the stock market that I used to help me uh, say uh, identify overbought and oversold conditions, this uh, Williams percentage R. It's a heavily modified Williams percentage R. I like to call it the Willie indicator. Here's a really good uh, working example. This is a bank stock in the crypto space. You can see the bot setup happening, but you can see all through here, don't buy it. It's overbought. It's overbought. Leave it alone. And sure enough, you know, he, look at that uh, window where it cleaned itself up and then back up we go. So if you really wanted to be a buyer, there was your window there. Bull div and momentum, blah, blah, blah. Point here is, I think this is an excellent anecdote that, yeah, I mean, it might be great, but if you come in and buy with Willie stupidly overbought, especially with RSI above overbought and all that kind of stuff, you might sit on a losing investment for quite a while. It often happens. So it's just a nice little rule of thumb, keep you honest. It's not necessarily like it's gonna give you the best timing signals. Just, you know, you gotta identify this market is frothy and oh yeah, yeah, don't chase. Cause you know, you don't know where you bought. Maybe you bought here and the whole correction is no big deal. But maybe you buy it here, right? Well, he's stupid, right? And, then, and the, you know, like that's, uh, what is that? That's 150 bucks and it had to come all the way down. Like the low here is $80. That's 50% loss on your capital. Oh, I'm dying a thousand deaths, right? So where am I going with all this? Point here is uh, I like to use as sort of an internal indicator, this, this NVT study, it's the same thing where basically when it goes red like this, it's telling you, hey, the network is not happy. Now, if you wanted to get in on Bitcoin, remember Willie Woo's like sort of like, hey, if we get him pulled back to 30, 40K, man, you got to load up big time. Uh, I think he bought it. I can't remember. But I think this is probably another great analogy where the market came out of that overbought condition, cleaned itself up, but whoop, right back into overbought shit again. So don't like the fact that we are back overbought again. And it means uh, the network's not really very happy. Probably not a best uh, time to go shopping and buying Bitcoins. You had to have the patience and discipline to wait for this and then when this happened, pull the trigger. Now, can you do that? And really, that's just a function of, can do you have the patience and discipline? Can you lay out ahead of time what it is you're gonna do that's gonna get you to act and then when it happens, act? A lot of people can't do that. Uh, that's why we teach the education program and how we sort of build setups. What is the criteria that gets you to act? And then you really is only as good of a trader as if you can actually follow what you said. Willie Wu and his glass node said value was below 40K. So as soon as we get into that area, I got to get on the buy side. Did you? I don't know, it's up to you. Uh, I can't force you one way or the other, but what I can say is uh, if you're thinking about coming to the market now, this indicator is saying, yeah, <laughs> better cool your jets. Uh, I don't like uh, how it's gotten so quickly overbought again and uh, the network stressed. So I don't know whether this is really glass node kind of thinking, but I really did like using this NVT as a sort of overbought, oversold indicator. It is overbought again. So here we are back overvalued again. Um, one thing I did like though, you know, with this network dominance is uh, I can really see it. And I sort of put tweets out to the effect that uh, you can start to see. You know, if you wanted to make money in shit coins, this is the window. <laughs> you, you had better have gotten your act together and you had better have taken the opportunity when these things dipped to get in there and actually buy. Because now they're going. Oh, look at EOS. I knew this one was going to go. So I loaded up down here. So here we go. Look at that. I mean, it's a beautiful, you can see. And, you know, I did a show, if you want sort of a dovetail, 
to uh, sort of the crypto market and sort of the anticipation of how this uh, the next few months are going to play out. Um, we do a show on Wednesdays with a couple uh, of the students. Um, and um, and uh, we went through maybe a, a half a dozen names and they all are looking like this. So this in, in this particular case, this would be uh, what I would call a bull flag. So we sort of go there to there. Here's your flagpole. And then the flag is basically there to there. See it waving in the breeze. Um, and really, you know, I mean, you could call this a bull flag. You can call this uh, AB equals CD harmonic. But uh, also, too, you know, confluence of levels. There's uh, foggy boggies. There's uh, horizontal support and resistance. There's 38.2s. I mean, this is a no-brainer, this thing's going up here. The only problem is, can you justify going in and buying that there? No. Because maybe, I mean, that's the worst part about this is capitalism. Maybe it goes like this, right? <laughs> the whole way up. Just drives you crazy, right? And if you come in, in here and buy there... Well, eventually, yep, the market does move up to that level that we talked about. But, hey, look, I'm smart. Oh, I'm stupid. Oh, I'm getting smarter. Oh, look, I'm, so, I'm super smart. Oh, no, now I'm stupid again. Oh, okay, no, now I'm getting smarter. Uh, hey, look at me. Hey, you want to buy my newsletter? Look at me. Oh, yeah. Man, look, I, I wear a dress real nice, too. Yeah, look at my legs. I'm hot. Woo, look at me. Oh, no. Oh, no, I'm not. No. Oh. No, don't ask for your subscription back, please. No, just stick around. I'll get better. I promise. I'll work. See? No, here I am. See, I'm getting smarter. Oh, yeah. See? And you like my legs again, right? Okay. I, oh. <laughs> and I'll tell you, I've seen lots of people in the business do this, right? Where basically you come out with a pick in like a neighborhood like this and you, you literally, I've seen people do this. Like literally they judge their net worth or their, not their net worth, their self-worth. On a daily basis. Oh, I, I, I suck horse cocks. Oh, I'm the man. Oh, I suck horse cocks. I'm the man. I suck. I'm a man, man. And it's just back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And and this is the way that you go gray early. This is the way that you uh, go bald early. Uh, very high, high stress life. Very high stress life. I, I wouldn't recommend you get involved in that. Uh, yeah, well, Paul, <laughs> Paul's solution is drill down to the one minute chart. And you'll be like, you'll be shorting, buying, shorting, buying, shorting, buying, <laughs> and just trading circles ar around uh, the slow pokes. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so the point of the matter here is uh, that this feels to me like this is sort of the junior market's little window. Uh, to come back, if you will, right? And that's uh, this kind of conversation. As soon as this broke here, uh, the whole junior market has started just to come to life here. And, you know, Colin and his whole group and in the DeFi space and stuff, they're going to fucking have a, they're going to shit a brick <laughs> if this thing starts ticking down below here. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, we might just go into an absolute altcoin insanity <laughs> so get ready folks oh goodness um enjoy the moves while while they last you know i, I don't like the idea of coming in on the buy side here on this one here you now this happens to be a trade setup that we teach on the site so anybody who's taking the level one program could see ideally where brian's probably going to want you to come in this would be sort of like you know, there's the bottom way down there. And this is ideally where I want you to be a buyer. That That's just, the, you know, if I could teach you guys how to trade, like that is just the shit right there. But maybe you're like, well, Brian, you know, I missed that move, but I still am thinking like this is continuation trading higher. Well, hopefully you can see. What we really want to do as technicians, we just want to wait for some sort of consolidation. And then trade the breakout of the consolidation. Right? You could even have argued, well, this looks like it went down, up, down, breakout. So there's a W. And even on this day that it actually put in the breakout of the W on the intraday basis, 
you can see so that high right there is uh, 125 357 and this breakout day 128 so it broke out the W is in but notice look how it finished the day it actually finished the day as a bit of a shooting star so you can't even argue that you couldn't have gone filled on this the breakouts there you see the bot level 11708 and look at even the next day it just sat there and it actually gave you the opportunity to get long off of the level so you know that's the way i would want you to approach rate uh, the trade and as you can see even right now we're we're well into the trade what worries me is that this thing's probably going to pop up into here and then we're going to find out what they're really got their plans are for monday morning that's why i kind of like the buy because if we do trade up through this 50 level which it looks to me like that's a foregone conclusion here then the bot says move your stop to scratch and if this thing pukes out because you know monday uh, the pros come back and this whole fucking rally was just a big con you just get blown out at, at, at scratch and so fucking what next trade in 10 minutes right so coming late on a name like this very late right there's the bottom there's the trend continuation trade can't touch that now now this is interesting because in this one in particular um, since we haven't traded to that 50 level even if we backed off and did something like that if I got a nice little bullish reversal candle pattern right down in there I could actually still go and buy that trend continuation trade yeah, it'd be a little bit late, but nonetheless. But if we do trade up through this 50 level, which literally means we're going to go take out this high. If we balk after taking out that high, then that's not a good sign. I'd probably want to hop off anyway. But that's not happening. Right now, this thing's pointing up. And my hunch is over the next 24, 48 hours, we're going to steamroll higher here uh, on a lot of these names. You know, like that KMD like this EOS. I mean, that one's already broken out through that top. I think we're just going to steamroll higher here and just push, push, push while we have that uh, while we have that uh, weekend window. Once we get sort of near keep in mind tomorrow's a holiday. So once we get sort of I'm going to say maybe around 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock p.m. Pacific time which would be, I guess, 2 o'clock. That would be like 5 o'clock Pacific, uh, or excuse me, Eastern time. That would be uh, heading into sort of European evening. Uh, then I think you're going to start seeing the, this market calm down a little bit um, and people getting ready for the pros to come back from the holidays. And then we're going to find out what the hell re the, the big boys really have planned for us. And you never know in this crazy-ass market, as long as we're painting higher highs and higher lows, just keep going with it. Uh, I don't see any reason to call a top here anywhere soon. So just, you know, ironically enough in this crazy game, half of your job as an investor is just to put yourself into the position that if the market goes apeshit, you get rich. Which, believe it or not, is actually extremely difficult to do. Because what usually happens, you know, this OMG is probably a good example. What usually happens is people look at this and they go, oh, I can't go any higher. And or maybe I bought like here, right? And they see that, hey, I'm up like, uh, I'm up like 1500 bucks. And uh, oh man, am I the boss from here, right? Up to here. And you know, you see that 2.667, you see the $1,500 and you go, oh God, I gotta grab it. I gotta grab it. I gotta grab it. I gotta grab that money. I can't take chance of that $1,500 disappearing. What they don't realize, though, is that, you know, something like this could very easily, you know, and it's a great example because it's basically real time, could easily turn into something like this. And you're in a big fucking hurry to get out and take your 1500 bucks here, and yet you miss this. And the worst part about it for Luna, this looks like a midpoint consolidation. <laughs> so anybody who sold all of their Luna thinking, hey, man, I just fucking totally killed it. You might wake up and be very, very regretful tomorrow <laughs> if it does something like that, which is totally realistic in this world. Um, 
So, you know, my message to you, please try and write this down. This is why I do that sell half on a double strategy is half of your job is just to simply get yourself into that low anxiety position and just let your money work for you because you don't know what the hell is going to happen. And usually, you know, Brian's like, okay, be careful, be careful, right? But remember, Brian's usually early. So I'm going to be like, okay, be careful. Dang, you can't chase, you can't chase. You know, of course, we bought down here, so we're killing it. But don't fucking go and buy this or you're asking for trouble. Look how much risk here. And the goddamn thing ratchets higher, right? Brian's usually right, but he's usually early. And then, you know, of course, I've got my next sell half on a double order sitting up here. So you know that if it pops up here, all I'm going to be doing is just selling another half, right? Because I sold a big whack of it right at 30. That was a sell half on a double order. No opinion, but if this thing is still a bull, and frankly speaking, I don't see any reason why that can happen, I still get paid and I still participate and my account balance just keeps going up. No opinions, don't stress about it, don't think about it, just let your money work. And the irony of it all is people are so such in a hurry to take profits here and get out, but what are you taking profits into? Think of it this way. If you're long Lunas, what's the alternative? To be long US dollars? Are you actually trying to tell me there's a better fundamental case to be long US dollars right now than to be long Lunas? I don't know. I mean, me personally, I think I'd much rather have my money in this thing than in US dollars right now. I don't know. Call me crazy. So... That's the kind of environment that I think we're in here, folks. Let the market make you rich. Give, it, give yourself permission. Put yourself in a low anxiety position that you, you let the market. Give the market permission to make you rich. Don't be in a hurry to get out of this shit because you never know what the fuck's going to happen here. But at the same time, too, don't, I know, I'm just sitting here barking, don't do this. Don't do what Donnie Don't does. <laughs> but you got to pay yourself, right? You see the sell half on a double. You have to build into your plan that you do have to pay yourself. Because I'm worried, folks, that we could be sitting here, maybe we do this into the end of the year, and then this thing comes right back down into next year and does something like that. There's no reason why that can't happen whatsoever. So you do have to make damn sure to pay yourself on the way up, please. And then, of course, I'm a big fan of neither a debtor nor a lender be. So when my site programmer developer dude said, the one thing that's going to make me feel really good in life is to pay off the mortgage and not have any debt overhanging me. I was like, do it, do it, do it, do it. So now nobody can mess with him. So, frankly speaking, um, you know, uh, Exotic says there, uh, Lerna was doing nothing and then boom, pushed by influencers. Actually, this came out that the end, the, the story of Luna, and maybe I uh, join the site and go back and watch all the old videos from the Daily Breeze, even watch my old Broiler Chickens. The story of Luna actually was pretty, it was pretty clean and it was actually pretty cliche. Great new product, Seward like found out about it, you know, gonna reinvent the wheel. The guy who was running the story had a pretty good reputation. Uh, Seward was like, fuck it, Brian, I got to grab some, just grab some, grab some, grab some. You know, Brian, don't chase, don't chase, don't chase. Okay, fine. I waited for the technical pullback. The technical pullback was on a FUD event that very cliche for this space, you know, hacks, all that kind of talk. They were able to write the ship. The product was good enough and they had more and more and more products in the pipeline that as the products came out and they hit the marketplace, the asset price got bid up. And frankly speaking, I, like I said, I don't think they're done with the new products coming to market. So as a result, I don't think it's done with its price appreciation. I think also too, um, that SOL, 
is it exactly the same story um, where and if I understand correctly, they're continuing to bring more and more new products to market. So in an interesting way, remember I just showed you that little consolidation on Luna, and I had said that that sure looked to me like a midpoint consolidation. Ironically enough, this is exactly the same thing. Hopefully you go boobity boo, right? Hopefully you see, what does that look like? I just quizzed all you. What is that? Julian just joined. What did I just say this was? Thank you, Cheryl. Cheryl, you're getting good at this. Nice. Um, so, boom, 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 boom. What a coincidence. You draw the bull flag's target, and this is where we are. Again, I mean, I don't know the story very well. All I do know is there was one guy who was on uh, Crypto Cobain show, and he's got, he's like, I ain't got any neck, but so fucking what? Yeah, you, you, you done making fun of me? Now, you want to make money? Go buy this goddamn SOL, <laughs> which I thought was great. The guy was like serious hardcore. But anyway, you look at it, you know, just like I showed you on Luna, there was a nice midpoint consolidation, and here we are up top. And if I understand correctly, they just keep bringing more and more and more products. My hunch is, you know, I don't know what the latest product is, but probably a nice consolidation. And if they keep bringing more products to market, you're going to have another stair step way higher here. Probably the easiest thing for you to judge where this thing's going to exhaust itself is we've been really, really fortunate on uh, TRI over the past year or two in that we've sort I think we have our brains wrapped around this chaos theory, which uh, keep, uh, keep in mind, nobody in the marketplace has any vested interest in teaching anybody this. I think it's just simply because of Brian's generosity um, and stupidity uh, that I've sort of spilled the beans to the public, but now all of you should understand exactly what happened here. And when you see this bull flag, boom, 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 and you see that chaos level, you better be ringing the register a bit up here for Pete's sake. <laughs> if you're not, I don't have any empathy for you if there's some sort of hack or something that comes out and this thing has to come back down to earth. But this is the kind of environment that we're in. Remember I just said there a moment ago, maybe, maybe you could sneak your way in, right? There's a nice little W. Uh, here was a nice trend line break, blah, 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 all that kind of fun stuff, right? Give me the first W on the other side of a trend line. Uh, and do you really need to be in a big hurry to say this is the top sell everything? I don't think so. Uh, you know, if you did step in on this one, that's at 31, so at 62, out goes half. Now, is that the top? I bet you a lot of people going, you know, that's the top, that's it. Uh, nope, sorry, uh, 122, 120, let's call it 125, up into our 2.618, there goes another half. Do you have to sell everything here? I don't think so. Hey, look at there's 4.669 foggies. <laughs> you guys, we have lots of examples, I think, on the, uh, on the, uh, Julian's, um, um, baby powder report, the Thursday, uh, video that we do on the site. He was showing how he nailed an 877 level uh, on an asset. Uh, I don't know where the hell this thing's going to top. What I'll simply say is I'll just keep spoon feeding uh, this thing. Every time it doubles, out goes a bit more. And this thing just keeps paying me the whole damn way up. So uh, Doge, is Doge uh, rallying? Never did uh, go and buy my Sedona Euphoria coins back. There's Doge. Uh, yeah. I suppose you could argue there's a bit of a bull flag forming there. Nice little bot. Uh, there's one low, two lows. Probably there's a little trade. Boom it a boom. Uh, so no more than 33. Actually, I'm flipping around. Hell, you could even go off of that level, I suppose. So did 33, did not go beyond 66. You've got one low. Pretty good example of railroad tracks. Uh, yeah, interesting. 
So, kind of like I was showing you with the OMG earlier. Looks like it's the same chart. Yeah, and you know when we did that video with the boys on Wednesday, I mean it looks like half the damn market looks like this. So uh, what's my rule here? Who can tell me? Would I take a trade right here, or should I wait for something? Right. So if anything, this is an absolutely perfect analogy of that. So, uh, you know, there's the railroad tracks. There's the test of the railroad tracks. There's the double bottom. There's the trend line breakout. The coup de gras, right? One low, two lows. What I would love is a nice little pullback here and away you go. And any kind of reversal pattern in this window right here. Nice little inside bar, nice little W, anything right in there uh, would be my nice little buy signal. And then you could front run the bot here if you wanted to. The only problem here is, you know, honestly, I don't like the way that uh, Alan um, manipulated this story. So I don't really want to encourage bad behavior. Uh, I might even argue the way that he manipulated this story back in the spring is exactly what that SEC guy uh, wants to address going forward. I uh, remember Allen got into a lot of trouble with his comments about Tesla stock. And you notice he doesn't comment about Tesla stock anymore. And now he's gone off into cryptocurrencies where, oh, this isn't regulated. So he's allowed to fuck around with the, uh, the public. Um, remember, folks, that son of a bitch was right here on uh, social media and on uh, major network U.S. stations touting this idea here when he should have been saying, do not buy this. This is extremely risky, folks. Don't touch this. That's exactly what he should have said. But instead, he was on there kind of just poo-pooing the risk involved here. And I watched a lot of people, just their jaws dropped when this happened. It was just, it was, frankly speaking, I think it's criminal. But the problem is that this space is unregulated. I don't think that's going to last 2022, 2023. He won't be able to get away with this next time. So anyway, that's my opinion there. So do I really want to go back into Doge and, and encourage his behavior, encourage uh, the story, even like be touting the story? Hey, I like Doge. No, because actually this is, ironically enough, this story right here is every the whole reason why I don't, I, I got into cryptocurrencies and decentralization and all that was to avoid what he just did through this. And it actually breaks my heart the way that the public got totally taken advantage of through this. Just breaks my heart. Uh, so there is, I, I would imagine, you know, the great part about a guy like, uh, I think Julian was the one who asked me to take a look at this, is, um, is, uh, Julian doesn't give a fuck about the, the story, <laughs> and maybe you can attest to that. If he see, if he want, if he thinks he can make money, great, he's he's going. So I'm I'm more of that kind of, you know, I, I I like to tout stories. So that's that's just me. Not that I can't tout that story. I uh, you know I will say you know with uh, with um, Seward and his Luna story now that was a totable story, and I got to tell you man this worked out perfectly. Um, all right, so I've been blabbing away here for an hour, maybe an hour and a half. I uh, hope you guys got some value out of my offering here today. I uh, would definitely uh, be prepared. Um, You could see some pretty wild price action here over the next few months in crypto. Be be prepared. Um, I'm obviously a big fan of buying the Ws. And actually, it was interesting. I went through and cleaned up all my uh, shitcoin 5000 list. And I even noticed I got a couple doubles off on some of the shitcoin 5000s. So some of them are already actually starting to perform. I was really surprised I got off a free trade on this one already. So that's look, looking good. Um, I guess the point that I put out with regard to the, the, the shit coins is when these things all start rallying and producing doubles, then I know we're definitely getting near the end of this whole move. 
Uh, and I think I told you guys that, you know, with regard to uh, my actual holdings and, and uh, the coins and stuff that you guys donated for Liam to buy his house and stuff, um, I'm actually going to be thinking about liquidating into the end of the year um, and obviously paying all our taxes and, uh, and squaring things up and sort of preparing for what the next 10 years of our lives are going to look like. So be uh, be prepared for that, but at the same time too, like I said, I don't think uh, I don't think it's in your best interest to say this is the top. Just let the top come in, and who knows where the hell it could come in. And my sneaky suspicion is that, uh, like Mister uh, Willy Woo, kind of thinking is I I wouldn't be surprised if there's some insane price action uh, heading into the end of the year here, folks. So keep your eyes peeled. So, if anything, great segue. Uh, we have our new school term coming up here. Um, and um, I think TRI has the process nailed. Um, and um, I've, I've banged away with this community uh, for the past, you know, let's call it uh, six or seven years. I think we have a, a really good reputation in the marketplace as not really trying to sell you anything that you really don't need. What we really want to do is we want to teach you the process and give you all of the tools to get really good at the process. Um, yeah, let's concentrate on the... Um, um, somebody asked where you can donate coins to, you mean Liam's house fund? <laughs> Is that what you're talking about? Um, I set up a, uh, a, um, yeah, I set up a, um, a, uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum donation page on my personal Facebook page a long time ago. I don't know. I know Stuart and Julian weren't happy when I showed that and it was only people that specifically asked how can I help Liam out that I showed them that page but uh, DMAC if you want to PM me on the site and I can give you that page and it's got all the QR codes and stuff so you can donate to Liam's fund I, uh, I got the, I don't know Julian actually Julian's here today Julian uh, does that bother you if I show if somebody wants to donate to Liam's house fund uh, to show that QR code I don't know. It's um, it's. I don't want to piss the other TRI members off, and them thinking that I'm trying to shill or something here. So uh, maybe DMAC uh, PM me, uh, DM me on Twitter or something like that, and then I'll just share that with you privately or something. Um, unless of course you know Julian wants to come in here and and say it's fine. He doesn't care. Um, so. Let's uh, let's stay on task here. We got to get this thing finished here. I've been blabbing for about an hour, an hour and a half, uh, maybe even two hours. I hope you guys got some value out of all this. Um, hopefully, you know we're setting our stage up for one hell of an end of the year. Maybe take the time while we're going through this phase to really get yourself schooled up on what a half decent trade idea looks like. And then that way, you're not going to find yourself chasing assets that are ridiculously expensive. And then, you know, uh, if we do happen to get any sort of things like pullbacks really quick, uh, reload zone pullbacks, you at least have your plan in place and you know who you are um, and where you want to go strategically and all that kind of stuff um, uh, in place. And then, you know, when the levels come into place, hey, you can act. It might be a bit difficult for new people that are just starting the program. I'll be perfectly honest with you. Usually I find, because remember, we, we try and re request. Um, what happened to the 21-3 Clinic Berg Aid? Wow, I don't even know what the heck that is. What What's that in reference to, Nick? 21-3 Clinic Berg Aid. I don't know what that is. Um, I've been doing a whole bunch of uh, plans. Of course, we have the uh, Andrew, uh, the Korean barbecue plan. That's his stock picking plan. 
We have um, the Shitcoin 5000 Challenge. Um, those are all the little shit coins that I, I was talking about there a few minutes ago. I don't know if we have any other. I'm not quite sure what that plan is. I don't know. What I, I think I'd, I I've told everybody before though that um, um, yeah, let's stay focused. I got to stay focused here. We got to wind this up. So, um, we've got the raffle for the school term coming up. Let's see if we can go find somebody to totally change their lives, uh, hopefully for the better, <laughs> and get them um, headed in an awesome direction here. Um, Rachel and uh, uh, Josh uh, were there to sort of help me earlier. I don't know. Are either of you two here? Yep, right here. There's Rachel. Josh is here in words. So how do we want to do this? Do you want to um, do it? Do I, should I just spin the wheel here, um, or uh, or do you want to, or what do we want to do? I don't. Know. Somebody give me some direction here. Josh says the honor is yours, Brian. What do you think, Rachel? Should I hit the button? Yeah, you spin the wheel. All right. So uh, Rachel put all this together. Thank you so much, dear, for uh, all that assistance. And uh, good luck to everybody who uh, joined. And uh, just an FYI, I don't know whether uh, Julian has it ready to go, but as of noon, theoretically, David uh, David's marketing campaign should kick in. So maybe uh, Julian even has a specific link that we can uh, send people to after we announce the winner uh, for everybody else. So without further ado, the uh where are we here we'll call it the fall 2021 uh tri school for trader development raffle uh winner is drum roll please here we go Dan F. Who is Dan F? Dan F. Hopefully, we just changed your life forever. <laughs> Way to go, Dan F. Uh, now the question is: Can um, Rachel find Dan F.'s contact information on his our wonderful form? Um, that she put together. <laughs> Dan F, are you watching the YouTube video? Maybe you are here. Who knows? And also to uh, Josh, uh, probably if you could touch base with Rachel, maybe you can uh, find out what his username is or something along those lines. Um, and um, and uh, maybe we can get into contact with him on social media. So congratulations, Dan F. Way to go. Now get your ass in school and get to work, damn it. <laughs> uh, Rachel says, we've got an email address. All right, well, way to go, Dan F. Awesome. Okay, so we've done our raffle. Nice, uh, good karma. Um, let's see, that's actually my shitcoin 5,000. You can see, actually, I did pretty good. I got a lot of fills here through the summer. The summer actually already starting to double. I'll leave that for another day. Um, Julian is here. So Julian, is there a web page and or anything on particular on the site that we should be promoting? Is there like a banner or something that pops up here now? Yes. All right. What page should we be promoting? Where is that? And maybe we should put that in the uh, in the link to the video. So um, all right. So here is the. Uh, the page Julian wants everybody to go to. Um, we can throw that in the uh, in the YouTube uh, chat. And I don't know. I guess the comments. I don't know how that comments thing. Works. Oh, because uh, I'm not on the page. I'm on YouTube uh, chat. All right. So I'll put. Uh, can I put the comments? Oh, oh, no comments. All right. Well, anyway. 
So I'll try and uh, add that to the, uh, the comments uh, page so you can see that later on. And uh, Josh, I suppose uh, you're going to be blitzing all this kind of stuff out too, right? And uh, Julian says that there'll be a banner on the page. <laughs> right, usually it's right up top here um, within the next hour or so for you to, uh, <laughs> excuse me, sign up that way. So, um, I don't know that we got, oh yeah, okay, cool. So we got our testimonies back. This was such a nice read. I'm glad uh, we didn't lose that. That's kind of cool. Really nice videos. I really like this page that David put together because uh, these are really cool, just very personal uh, interviews that I did with people when I was over in Europe. And then actually we had a uh, meetup here uh, just locally uh, a couple years ago, I guess before all the sickness stuff. And some really great interviews uh, we had. I think Josh, aren't you in this interview here? I think you are. Same this way. trading business. Uh, somewhere down in this area. There he is, Josh. You're just a little level two graduate dad. <laughs> so anyway, there's Josh, our, uh, our uh, social media maven right now. So anyway. So uh, pop on over and check out the, uh, the uh, nice page that uh, David's put together here. Uh, and, you know, if we can help you uh, change your life, of course, that's exactly what we're here to do. So, Okay, what do you think? Uh, did I cover everything? Was there anything that I missed that I was supposed to talk about here? Anyone? Anyone? Julian? Josh? Uh, Rachel, even? Is there anything uh, that I was supposed to talk about that I didn't? No? Not hearing anything? Bueller? Bueller? All right. All right, why don't we leave it at that, guys? Sure hope you got some value out of that presentation here today. Um, you know, I think I talked lots about what I'm expecting here uh, heading into the end of the year. I thought this is an interesting side-by-side -side comparison. This is Bitcoin last cycle and what I see Ethereum doing. <laughs> so as I said there a moment ago, I don't know whether it's in your best interest to really uh, step in front of this uh, train here. Just spoon feed. This is a spoon feed kind of market. Just spoon feed, and um, and you know if the market wants to get let you uh, be rich, yeah, let the market let you be rich. Well, what the hell? Why not, eh? All right. Uh, why don't we leave it at that? Um, I suppose. Um, yeah, we got Seward on the uh, call for the daily brief first thing tomorrow morning. So hopefully we'll get a nice update on site development and where we go from here. Have yourselves a great day, everybody. Uh, way to go, Dan F. on the big win. Uh, PMA for the win. All the best. Oh, uh, wish me luck with Liam today. Always, uh, man, I tell you, every time you guys uh, wish me a big round of luck uh, with Liam, uh, we have a really good afternoon. Uh, I probably just jinxed it, but what the hell. So uh, if all of you could uh, wish me best wishes uh, for Liam, help me uh, give him an awesome afternoon so he feels like... Uh, He's, uh, he's having a good life. Uh, I'd appreciate it. And it also helps me uh, stay uh, lots and energized for him. So thank you, Kevin. Appreciate it. All right, everybody. Have yourselves a great rest of your day. PMA for the win. All the best. And bye for now.